Mm-hmm. Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. In my last show, I profiled the futuristic company Ectolife, which aims to change the way people have babies by using an artificial womb, gestating outside the mother's body. I brought up some salient criticism of this technology, but I felt that it was worth speaking to its founder rather than just leveling the criticism without response. I don't believe in hyped up sensationalist stories. We'll just leave that to the other networks. So I reached out to Ectolife's founder, Hashim Al-Gaili, as I promised I would, and he has been cordial enough to take the time to speak with me. So I hope you will enjoy this conversation. Hashem Al-Gaili, thank you so much for joining me today on The Bo Show. You know, a lot of people from Russell Brand to a number of conservative commentators have criticized Ectolife. So tell me what the general response has been since you released that promotional video. Well, I think, it, first of all, it has been taken out of context. And um, a lot of people believe that it is real, when in reality it's mere concept right now. However, you have to understand that uh, it is a science-based concept with every feature has already been achieved through scientific research. It's really all about combining everything together and creating a prototype. Uh, The response, well, as you highlighted, has been mostly negative, Mm -hmm. which is understandable because to a lot of people, birth is a spiritual, sacred, you know, biological activity, you could say. And, um, yeah, they think that this is, uh, this is a very scary concept. And, you know, I would say it also has to do with the way sci-fi movies, dystopian sci-fi movies have uh, presented this kind of concept in, a, in the negative way. So, okay, so Hashim, walk me through how you came up uh, with the idea for Ectolife and how soon you anticipate it being ready. I have always been tracking the field of ectogenesis. This is the field that deals with growing an organism outside the mother's uterus outside the body and I have reported so many times about artificial wombs Um, and I noticed that ever since I started science communication around 13 years ago there has been so much progress in the field of ectogenesis I am a biotechnologist by trade I have studied biotechnology and molecular biology this is my field and um, I understand the science behind it So I decided to combine a number of scientific fields, stem cell research, ectogenesis, biotechnology, genetic engineering, molecular biology, and so many other fields, and come up with the latest studies in these fields and use them to develop the concept. And so everything is really science-based. It's really not speculative, and it's not science fiction. So no, nothing about what we saw in that video was outside of the realm of, I, you're, you're no. saying all of the technology is actually there. You it, just put it into yeah. one cohesive plan. And how soon do you think something like this will actually be probable to accomplish? That's a good question. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, one of the ethical concerns is actually, um, or one of the guidelines is called the 14-day rule. Okay. And this rule is that you cannot experiment on human embryos beyond 14 days. But in May 2021, the uh, body that is responsible for putting these rules, stem cell research uh, body that uh, governs these rules, decided to relax the restrictions. So it's now beyond 14 days that you can experiment on human embryos. However, it's still not allowed to create a full organism. Yeah, this is still prohibited. Now, let's imagine that we decided to get rid of this rule completely. And, you know, you can just experiment on human embryos and create a full organism. Based on the statistics, based on the reports, based on the science that I have seen so far, I would project that we would need as little as 10 years to have it fully functional and ready to produce or, you know, to incubate human babies completely outside the mother's uterus and in a fully artificial environment. 10 years. 10 years. But 10 years, yeah. That's, that's the minimum. Okay. Maximum, I'd say 15 years. But then you will also have to educate the society to accept this kind of technology. And, you know, that's not going to be... Yeah, that's, that's what I talked about when I, when I covered this, is there, there's a societal 
um, engineering effect in addition to a genomic one, I suppose. So in my last episode, I, I tried to break down the Q&A response to Ectolife. I was looking at your Instagram and, and saw some of the written responses, but I felt, felt it was fair for you to be able to address these you know, head on. Um, I think that's only fair to do. So let's walk through some of those objections. Um, and one of those, of course, was uh, saying that you were playing God. And I'm just wondering, do you feel that this is playing God, meaning not just helping out infertile couples, which you have mentioned, but actually creating lab babies for anybody who wants them. Look, I don't think it is playing God at all. I think you can look at it from a different perspective. You could say, well, God put humans on earth and he blessed them with this technology to help alleviate human suffering. You could look at it this way, right? I mean, we have a lot of technologies that are around us and we use them uh, almost every day. When you go to the doctor, do you think that you're playing God? I mean, people always say there is a God's plan. If God's plan is to be sick and we don't have to go to the doctor, do you think that we are interfering with God? I'm asking oh, you're you. asking me, do I think yes. we're interfering with God by, by medical intervention? Yes. Not necessarily. I, I understand your point about, about, yeah. do, about giving humans the tools to be able to make their lives better. But I do think there's a difference, and this is what I'd like for you to address, between helping an infertile couple out or someone that's had their uterus removed for cancer purposes and actually engineering and orchestrating a human being and taking nature and nurture outside of the mother's process. That to me seems more like playing God because you're no longer just helping a couple. I think this opens up a Pandora's box, does it not? I would say, I would say it depends on what qualities you are engineering. There are families that have to endure so much suffering because of genetic diseases. And they could put a stop to that through genetic engineering, through CRISPR-Cas9. You could end suffering of these families so that future generations of such families will not have to suffer the same genetic diseases. I would say this is a necessity. If you can do it, I would say do it. But certainly there are a lot of ethical questions about changing eye color and hair color. Yeah you know, all the other things. These are extra features that probably aren't needed, you know, because, well, let's say, yes, you're right, there is a lot of variations in the world and it's probably there for a reason. You don't want everybody to look the same and be the same if everybody can just customize themselves. But the necessary things that deal with genetic diseases, I don't think there is anything playing God here. I think it is alleviating human suffering and it is it is making life much better through the use of technology that you could say by the grace of God or maybe God put it there for us so that we can use it. Well, let's, so take, let's, the, let's take the opposite approach, which is someone called your technology satanic. Um, and right. you, your response was, you know, whatever you want to call it, it's happening. And I thought that was kind of an interesting way that you responded to that because it seems that you don't want any, any ethical barriers or religious objections to it. And, you know, in the beginning of this interview, it sounds like you are more open to hearing those. You understand that those objections are there, but you're also asking people to change their perception of it, which you may, may or may not be able to do. So why do you think there should be zero ethical objection at all no, to this? I didn't say there should be zero ethical look into this. Um, let me tell you something. In vitro fertilization, it came in 1970s, right? Yeah. There was a lot of pushback, a lot of backlash, a lot of resistance to it. Do you know how many babies uh, uh, were born so far through IVF? Quite a few. More than, eight, more than 8 million. And it is widely accepted by society. A lot of people go to it right away as soon as they try every other possible way to treat their infertility. So what I'm trying to say, or what I was trying to say through that answer was that no matter how much resistance technology receives at the beginning, eventually, when we realize that there is a need for it and there will be a need for uh, artificial wounds, we will start to become more accepting of the technology. It doesn't mean that you have to get rid of your, you know, uh, ethics and you don't have to question it and you don't have to. No, that, that was a big but you, thing. But, but Hashem, you've compared this to a surrogate mother. And it seems that there's quite a difference and distinction between IVF and placing that embryo in a, in a surrogate mother's womb and putting What's this in, a, in, a, in an artificial pod. 
I mean, where you What's can, the well, the difference would be that it's entirely AI generated, that, it's, a, that it's, a, it's not a human being that's doing the gestation process, which to me would take the mother-child womb relationship completely out of the equation. And how do you know that that's not going to have unintended consequences, as you have mentioned in some of your sci-fi work, that there can be unintended consequences to the technology? They could be. There could be. Uh, well, regarding the mechanization of the process, as you say, yeah. compared to a, 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 a real mother, yeah? Yeah. Biologically speaking, when you have an organism with all the tissues and organs, that organism will grow, will develop a consciousness, self-awareness, will start feeling the environment around them, Mm -hmm. And that's when, when things will, will develop. When you have a surrogate mother who is carrying the baby of yet another woman, who is the mother in this case? Well, it would be the surrogate mother, but it's also a completely natural process. Who, who is the baby going to feel more connected to? I'd say for those nine months, probably the human being that it's inside of. And how does he know that this is the mother? He doesn't probably, some babies don't even know that they are actually the children of surrogate mothers. Well, what that about, may. What, what, what about adoption? What about what, adoption? Ed, I'm, you, I'm, you, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I do want to address yeah. that. You, you when have. You get an adopt, when, it, when you adopt a baby at a very early stage, soon after birth, and that baby doesn't know that they are adopted, they're going to develop the bond with whoever takes care of them. That may be true. Yes, I see what you're saying because you're talking about environment, but also that adopted baby was also raised in a mother's womb, in an actual human being. And so, what difference does it make? Honestly, I mean, I don't really see the difference. If the environment. Well, we don't, well, we don't know because it's never been done it's before, like right? We don't know. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm saying theoretically speaking, you wouldn't expect a difference because you have replicated exactly the same conditions down to the last molecule. And how are we going to know if you don't try? That's the whole point of this thing. Well, we're just, How are we going to, <laughs> we're yeah, just trying with human beings, you know. Uh, I, I want to yeah, mention yeah, the adoption if issue. Try, if we try, we will know whether this is not the path we want to choose, and we'd have to rather invest in some other technology, or whether this is the solution.